Welcome students to week number one in Science 200. You are going to learn all about natural sciences this term and mainly the scientific process. So let's see what we've got going on. Alrighty, so the first thing you need to do is get your web text that is uh, produced by Sumo. A web text is just an online textbook. And you have to get this online version because that's where you're going to input answers to questions, including multiple choice, but also short answer. So um, you need access to that web text in Sumo. Make sure you get that as quickly as possible because we start the course off at a run. Read chapter one in the web text you will find out that there's one chapter per week, so there are eight chapters in the book. There are four sections in the first chapter, and you need to complete the questions in all four of these sections. A lot of the answers are automatically graded, so you will see in there what happens to your questions when you get them graded. But you will also see that the grades are transported then into Brightspace where our gradebook is for the course. You can redo questions in order to improve your grade, so be aware of that. The instructions, I think in that section 1.1, it tells you how you can do this. You don't just go back and change the answer to one question. You have to redo all the questions on one page. And, you know, usually that's three or four questions, so just be aware of that. Uh, but you can redo work in order to improve your grade. All right, next what you need to do is select a topic because you are going to be doing research on these topics that have to do with the natural sciences throughout this whole term. So from the first week all the way to the eighth week, you are going to be working on this topic. Well, what are the topics? The topics are listed in your web text and there are accompanying articles that go with these topics to help you get a better understanding of them and why they're important. Of course, I'm going to mention them a little bit because I'm interested in all of them. Uh, genetically modified organism, organisms, also called GMOs, they've been in the news, people have lots of opinions about them, and everybody's buying food that says non-GMO, non-GMO, okay, that is not really regulated. How much is too little of a GMO to have in a product? If you buy anything that has corn in it, anything whatsoever, you have eaten a GMO because almost all corn plants in this country are genetically modified. And that goes for soybeans and lots of other crops. So you need to figure out what a GMO is. What are the different genes that they put into these organisms? Are they, do they make frankenfoods then? Because that's what everybody's afraid of, these gigantic monster plants that are harmful and take over human beings. I mean, I just saw an article the other day that a student used as a source, and it was talking about the DNA of a GMO being incorporated into human DNA. No, no. DNA doesn't even work like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Any DNA that we eat is broken down into its components called nucleotides through your digestive process. And then we build our own DNA molecules. <clears throat> There's not a way for GMO DNA to be incorporated into the DNA in our cells. It just, it, it just doesn't, the biology of it just doesn't work like that. So anyway, you're going to be taking a look at that topic if it interests you, and a lot of people are interested in it having to do with health. So we will be talking with each other about that through, <laughs> through the term. Electric cars, lots of people are interested in these. You know, gas prices have been pretty high in the last couple of years, and so some people are moving toward electric cars, though they are very expensive. Um, and if you have them long enough, you're going to be replacing all those batteries. Are they quite as energy efficient as, as they're purported to be? Um, do they have zero carbon footprint? Are they perfect for envir the environment? Um, we'll see about that. 
commercial nuclear energy. You know, we've got away from nuclear energy for a long time there because people are so afraid of it. But it is literally one of the cleanest forms of energy that there is. So you can take a look at that. Genetic engineering, and this is more genetic engineering of human beings. Um, can we change genes in human beings to, to a, a point where then they won't develop a disease or maybe they have a particular characteristic? Um, so what's going on with that in the world today? And I will tell you that there is a gigantic um, moratorium on genetic engineering of human embryos across the entire world, but it has been done. And there was a huge controversy about, controversy about that. Ocean acidification is one of the problems with the burning of fossil fuels because we release a lot of extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. That carbon dioxide then makes its way, dissolves into the ocean, and that decreases the pH of the ocean. That's making it more acidic. And there are all kinds of environmental problems because of this. If it continues, we're going to have more problems with the ecosystem of the ocean. And they're actually quite a few ecosystems that have to do with the ocean. But anyway, just overall, it's going to cause environmental problems, and we've already seen the effects of these. And also biodiversity conservation. So this means um, keeping all of the different species in an ecosystem that help to make it healthy. This also means preventing invasive species from um, damaging ecosystems. It means helping animals and plants, etc., other organisms on the brink of extinction come back so that they can fulfill their roles in ecosystems. So biodiversity conservation takes all different forms, and you can get more specific in this if you want to. I mean, I remember in 2012 when I saw a bald eagle in South Carolina for the first time, a bald eagle in the wild, of course, when I saw that for the first time, and I was just so thrilled. Oh my goodness, so thrilled, because I've lived my whole life and never seen a bald eagle in the wild until 2012. Well, what are the steps that we're taking to help bring bald eagles back from the point of extinction in the United States? So there are all kinds of nuances of any of these topics, and you will select a question that has to do with that topic that you will examine. Now, if none of those interest you, there are other topics, but you have to get approval by me in order to use that topic. So a couple that I have that I would like to know more about and that I am very interested in are microplastics that are found out in the environment because we're running into this now. Microplastics come from the breakdown of plastics in the ocean and in the soil, different places, and what is happening to those microplastics? Are they ended up in us? Are they ending up in other organisms? Also, another one that I'm interested in is light pollution. So there are all kinds of pollution, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, you know, lots of pollution. But what about light pollution? I really notice this when I go to the beach and you can see so many stars at night at the beach because everybody turns out all their lights and it's not a very populated place where I go so it's just amazing to see all the stars and then I look at the sky when I'm home and I live near Charlotte North Carolina and we have a lot of light pollution and you just can't see as many stars so how is that affecting us how is that affecting animals and plants around us so light pollution is a problem uh, those are just two extra ones that I have that you could take. All right, so we've got your topic, and you have to choose one, figure out the significance of it, figure out what it is, which you will explain. So you're going to choose the topic in the first week. All right, then another thing that you have going on this first week is discussion board postings. You will not have these every week, but you will have them several times during the term. So your initial post will always be, no matter which week it is we're talking about, 
is due by Thursday night before midnight, your initial post. And then you also will have two response posts, responses to your classmates. Those response posts are due by Sunday night before midnight. So your initial post for this first week is to introduce yourself. Who are you? Right? Tell us something about you. Where are you from? What's your major? What do you hope to learn from this class? What are your career goals? What are your hobbies? What's your life situation? If you want to share, you know, share what you want to share. So that's one or two paragraphs. And then also answer these questions. What looks like, because you're going to be reading about the, the fields of the natural science, the natural sciences. Which field of natural science is most interesting to you and why is that? And is that field that you have chosen related to the topic that you have chosen? So that means that you have to have gone through chapter one in order to even know about the topics that you've got to choose from to do your research on. So that's the initial post. Then your two response posts. Your two response, po response posts are two, two different classmates unique post to each of them, of course, because you're talking to that person individually. Include what you have in common and whether you agree or disagree with them about the natural science that they have chosen and maybe the topic that they've chosen too. It doesn't really matter, but do you have something in common with them? Um, is their topic interesting? Is their choice of natural science interesting to you? So you've got discussion board posts too. And then finally, I have some tips for you for this first week. Watch my videos in the announcements. Every week by Monday morning, I will have a video in my announcements. I have a weekly announcement also that comes out, but my video is in the announcement. Watch my videos every week because I give you um, hints and tips about the material for that week. I give you some information about the material that week. Uh, I tell you deadlines and all that sort of thing. So please watch my videos. Deadlines are important in this course and I already mentioned Thursday. So the only thing that's ever due on a Thursday before midnight is that initial discussion board post. Everything else is due by Sunday night before midnight. Whenever you see guidelines and rubrics for an assignment, be sure to read those over because the guidelines are basically your instructions for that particular assignment. And then the rubric is the way that I'm going to grade that assignment. It's my grade sheet. And if you will notice when you look at your feedback each week, it is the rubric. Every section ha has its own section in the Brightspace grading portion of an assignment. And I grade according to what's in that rubric. Okay, a rubric is just a way to grade anything. And it's got, well, what's an exceptional job? What do you have to do to, have an, to make this an exceptional job? What's a good job? What needs some work and what's totally absent. Also, I want you to read the feedback that I give, uh, particularly having to do with your topic, particularly with your topic, because you're going to be putting all these pieces of your topic research together over the term until week six. Week six, you turn in your final draft of the information that you have researched and then the last two weeks you're going to be making a presentation using that work. So read the feedback that I give because sometimes you're going to have to make some changes and some revisions. Label everything, everything in Brightspace that you turn in, your name, the date, the course, Science 200, my name, Dr. Janie Sig. Anything like that, what the assignment is, you know, which one, 1-4 one or whatever. Label everything, okay? So that's important. And also, when in doubt, when in trouble, when you need clarification, when you have questions, ask, ask, ask me. 
I am here for you to help you. M.Sigman at snhu.edu. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Sometimes it's within minutes. It's always been within 24 hours. No matter what is going on in my life, it is. I have always responded by the time I get to 24 hours, but usually it's much quicker than that. So please do ask me. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you with the course. If you get stumped, if you have no idea what the instructions are asking you to do, if you get stumped with your topic and you can't figure out which direction to move in, I can help you. I will guarantee it. So ask me if you need help. With that being said, I hope that you have a wonderful week this week.